Hi guys, welcome to In Case of Econ Struggles. Welcome to another asset pricing struggle. This is part two. Today, we're going to start talking about risky assets. Specifically, we are going to talk about asset pricing and arrow de equilibrium model, and we're going to add uncertainty or different states of the world into the arrow de model. So we talked about how to solve for an allocation for an arrow de equilibrium with uncertainty in a separate video. But in that video, we really didn't talk about asset pricing that much. And so we're going to talk about it. So as normal, timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's start getting into it. And just to help us really remember what's going on with this arrow de equilibrium with uncertainty, you've got people and you're living in this world. They have an endowment that shows up on their doorstep every day. And so what we had is that there are different states of the world. And so each good in a different state of the world is basically separate goods. And so to use a very simple example, we talked about weather. So we said that you can look outside your window and it's either going to be sunny outside or it's gonna be raining. Those are gonna be the two states of the world. And so if you think about like a coconut, if that's the good, then you can think about, well, you have a dry coconut and sort of like a rain resistant coconut. And so what you wanna do is you wanna have the coconut for the correct weather. So if it's sunny, you wanna have a dry coconut those wet resistant coconuts are worthless if it's sunny. And if you have a dry coconut when it's raining, that's also worthless. So you want to match the good to the state. And we just, again, are using that example to get behind the idea that one good in two different states of the world is basically the same as two different goods. And it's helpful to think about that as two different goods. So we have two states of the world. We're buying assets for the specific state of the world. So if I want a coconut tomorrow, that's not enough. I need to specify I want a dry coconut. I want a coconut when it's sunny tomorrow. And that's different than a coconut for tomorrow if it's raining because that's going to be sort of a rain resistant coconut. So they're different goods. They're not actually different goods. We're just calling them different goods to again, really hammer the idea that one good in two different states of the world is basically two different goods. And we said before that endowments also depend on the state of the world. And we had some notation where we had S sub T is today's weather as superscript T is the history of weather up to that point. And big S is all the different possible states of the world and all the different event histories that could happen. So remember that an error to root equilibrium with uncertainty, it's an allocation. If we've got two people, Bill and Dave, it's gonna be the consumption in each event history across all time. It's gotta solve the utility maximization problem, which again is a double sum, where we said this is the probability of a given state. This is the period utility in that state. And this is the budget constraint. And we said, unsurprisingly, that we still have to satisfy market clearing, but you have to satisfy the market clearing in every time t. Now, the reason there's no st here is because a state is going to be realized in each time. And so I think it's helpful just to write it for all t, because whatever the state is in given day t, we have to eat all the coconuts that we have in our endowment. So market clearing is basically the same. You might see it as ctst and et of st which is totally fine. This way also works. Again, I'm just trying to make this as simple as possible. Now, here's where we start getting into the asset pricing. So when we did that video on arrow de root equilibrium with uncertainty, when we did those first order conditions, we basically got that what's gonna happen is that PT of ST is gonna be the time discount factor times the probability of a certain event history times the marginal utility. And that's going to be divided by the probability of some base state, so that some reference state of the world in reference to maybe it's sunny outside on day zero. So if we just split this up a little bit, what you're going to see is that we have the time discount factor, the relative probability of that state, the marginal utility of that state, again, with respect to or sort of scaled by this sort of reference utility in a base state. So what you can see is that if we're going to do an asset, maybe it's going to give you one unit of the good and t plus one and state s t plus one is equal to s tilde. And I'm asking what is the price of that asset? All I'm gonna do is substitute that in. And so you can see it's one period, so beta to the t is just beta one. So really this beta to the t is how many periods in the future you want this asset for. This is the ratio of marginal utilities in the state you wanna buy this good for, divided by the marginal utility in the base state. This is the relative probability of having the state tomorrow be s tilde scaled by the probability that at time zero, it's sunny. And we can sort of transform this into this conditional probability here, because if we have two states, if I know that today it's sunny, I can sort of figure out the probability that tomorrow it rains or tomorrow it's sunny. And so that allows me to have one number rather than a fraction. But again, we still have this ratio of marginal utilities for that future state and the state that we're in today. 
And what I really want you to get out of this formula is a couple things. First, when are prices higher? Well, prices are higher if there's a higher probability that it's going to be that state tomorrow. And of course, if the probability of that state happening is pretty low, you should expect that buying an asset for that state should also be pretty cheap. So that makes a lot of sense. The opposite is going to be true when I think about this ratio of margin utility. Why is that? Well, remember that we've assumed diminishing margin utility. So if you have more consumption, if you have a bigger endowment in this state right here, then margin utility is lower. And if margin utility is lower, you should be willing to pay a lower price because your marginal benefit is your margin utility, which is lower. The opposite is true. Let me say that again, just sort of slightly slower. So if, for example, I'm looking to buy an asset in a state where I have a really huge endowment, so my endowment is really big, if I have a really big endowment, then because of diminishing marginal utility, my marginal benefit of having an additional coconut in the state tomorrow is pretty small. And if my marginal benefit of having a coconut tomorrow in that state is pretty small, I should not be willing to pay that much for that coconut, so the price should be lower. On the other hand, if I have a very small endowment that's going to be coming my way in that particular state of the world tomorrow, then my margin utility is going to be pretty high, because if I have not a lot of stuff, the extra utility I get from getting one more coconut is going to be pretty high. And if the extra utility I get from another coconut is pretty high, that's sort of my marginal benefit, just sort of scaled by these other things. And so I'd be willing to pay a pretty high price for a coconut. And so my price should be higher if my marginal utility is also higher. But my marginal utility being high means that my consumption is low. My marginal utility being low means that my consumption is high, means that I have a lot of coconuts today. So that's just sort of breaking down this formula, just so we get a basic idea of how this works under uncertainty. The next couple of parts, we'll talk about things like riskless assets, and then we'll slowly start moving towards something like a Lucas Tree pricing model, talk about some stock prices and how that works from a Lucas Tree model, and hopefully that will help you a lot with your asset pricing struggles. So if these videos are helping you out, please consider leaving a comment. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Please like the video if it was helpful. We'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.